Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fix YouTube channel. My name is FBL Phillips and this is your Game Week 30 episode of Your Quick Guide. And the big double Game Week 29 isn't actually over yet. We still have a couple more games to go tonight. So make sure to take all the info we gather from those matches combined with all the stuff in this video into the next upcoming game week. And for game week 30, we're going to be looking at the top captain selection as well as the top 10 predicted point scorers ahead of the upcoming game week. Then we'll be looking at a few game weeks into the future, the upcoming fixtures and which teams to target with some players of note from those defensive and attacking fixture difficulty teams that are ranking the highest. Let's get into things, shall we? And kick things off with the captaincy. <laughs> And it's yet to kind of be determined what the right way to go was with Double Game Week 29 due to the fact that Rashford is still yet to play at time of recording. But it looks like it's going to be relatively close between some of the Brighton boys. Rashford yet to get a return yet. We'll see what he can do against Brentford tonight. So very close to call. Still can't decide what the best route was in that game week. But Game Week 30 is going to be another one where it is a very tight decision. And there are quite a few options of note that we could be interested in as picks. Now, it's worth noting with James Madison, who was in this graphic, he looked like he might have picked up a little bit of a knock last night. We're yet to get any clear info on what injury he has sustained. But I've got him in here for the comparison of the kind of fixture difficulty. Maybe if you own someone else, like a differential, maybe a different Leicester asset attacking forward, it could still be useful information. But the other three options in this graphic that you can see to the left of Madison are the main ones that I will be considering. And of those three it is Ollie Watkins. And out of the top four, he is the highest predicted point scorer for the game week, but only very narrowly ahead of Harry Kane. So it's 5.8 for Ollie Watkins and 5.7 for Harry Kane just behind with Marcus Rashford quite low down. Surprisingly, 4.8 is his predicted points total for game week 30. And he is the highest ownership, whereas someone like an Ollie Watkins could act as more as a differential option this week. But I do think that many managers who don't or yet own the Englishman will be bringing in the Aston Villa forward ahead of this game because of his captaincy potential for the nice home fixture against Nottingham Forest. Now, Forest have looked pretty decent recently, but as we know, they are much poorer on the road than they are at home. And this fixture is taking place at Villa Park, so it will all be going in Watkins' favour. And in fact, besides the Bournemouth fixture that we can see with Madison, it is the strongest fixture of the rest of the selection here. So Brighton and Everton, tougher games than Forest. Only marginally, Everton is very, very slightly a worse fixture than Forest. It's almost too close to separate. Only 0.01 expected goals conceded per 90 between those two opponents there. In terms of expected goals as teams, though, it's Manchester United who have been performing the best attacking-wise. Casemiro being out of the team doesn't seem to hurt their attacking data too much, although with the performance we saw against Newcastle, you could say otherwise from the eye test recently. We'll see how they fare against Brentford tonight, of course, but that could play into quite significantly how much consideration we're putting towards giving Marcus Rashford the armband in game week 30. Elsewhere, Harry Kane is on the highest expected goals of any, of any team, so Spurs performing the best attacking-wise ahead of Aston Villa. But as we know with Watkins, he's on the penalties for them as Kane is with Spurs, but he is very much more the talisman. He gets pretty much every goal that they score, although Watkins at the moment for Aston Villa. He's on a terrific goal-scoring run, and I can see that continuing against Forrest at the weekend. In terms of expected FPL points as a player from the opposite stats tool on the Fantasy Football Fakes website, it is Harry Kane who's been performing the best as of late. 5.83 is his expected FPL points return per 90 minutes. Marcus Rashford in second with Ollie Watkins down in third. And then James Madison, if we're considering him, down at 4.55, rounding off the end of the list. So who would I captain out of these four selections? I think I'm very much considering putting the armband on Ollie Watkins this week. His live ownership at 30% currently will be higher, especially inside metrics like the top 10k and the top 100k, which we'll be able to check out on the website later in the week. So use the links in the description as always. But Ollie Watkins could offer a really nice balance between a player who's in great form, has a fantastic fixture, and isn't owned by everyone at the moment. And with people scrambling to try and get Erling Holland back into the side, if he's fit, again, could be another one who offers a captaincy option. And if he is fit, then we have to truly consider Erling Holland, of course. But with Man City having Champions League, we don't really know. Pep's never been particularly useful with his injury news, so I'm not going to assume anything and judge that Holland is fit. He's going to be a little bit of a risk to captain, I would assume, at the weekend. Ollie Watkins looks like a great selection if you want to go with him. But we'll move into the top 10 predicted point scorers of the week then. And due to Haaland's injury at the moment, I don't think he is going to make it into this list. 
but it is Ollie Watkins who comes out top of any player on that 5.8 total that we saw earlier. Harry Kane is then in second with Madison down in third if he's fit with De Bruyne on 5.3 and then Hyunmin Son on 5.2 for the rest of the top five. We've then got Mohamed Salah on 5.1 who should presumably come back into the Liverpool side after Klopp features some bizarre rotation in midweek against Chelsea. Then we've got Martinez for Aston Villa in goal along with David Rea as well both on 4.9 predicted points for the game week for them so if you're weighing up whether you need to play Rea or Keba this week or any other goalkeeper duo those are the two top predicted scoring keepers of the game week. And then we've got Marcus Rashford on 4.8. And finally, Ivan Tony on 4.7, who is a player that many are considering taking out for Erling Haaland. He's got a Newcastle fixture that does look rather difficult on paper, whereas Erling Haaland will be coming back for a very nice game against Southampton. So Tony to Haaland is going to seem a very popular move this week if Haaland is confirmed fit. I think unless he is, you probably shouldn't take that risk. Tony's in great form at the moment. And, you know, he's, he's just in that kind of form where he can score against the big teams. He's scored against Brighton, who, you know, have been pretty, playing pretty well recently. He's got Newcastle up next. I wouldn't say it's for certain he's not going to score in that one at all. He's always got penalties. He's great in the bonus points as well lately. So, yeah, Ivan Tony, it's going to be a tough one to transfer him out for Erling Haaland. Like I mentioned, we've got the Champions League as well to consider. So, it's going to be a tough call. Right now, I think I'll just wait and confirm if Haaland is 100% fit and Pep is actually helpful for once and tells us that, then I will probably make the switch across as I would like Haaland in for game weeks like the double game week 34 that we have coming up. Speaking of upcoming fixtures, we'll move in to have a look at the next couple of game weeks and how things are looking all the way up to game week 33. And game week 30 up next, we've got a very nice fixture for Leicester as we saw. And they're actually ranking highest for upcoming fixtures over the next four game weeks in total despite having a tricky away fixture against Man City in game week 31. So if you have someone like a Madison, you could consider benching in game week 31. You could bench your Brighton assets this week, bench your Leicester assets next week. You've got a really nice set of fixtures over the next couple of game weeks. Crystal Palace then next up. I don't think I'm really considering anyone from there at the moment. They've got this new manager bounce under Roy Hodgson, who's come back in at the sharp age of 80 or whatever he is at this moment. But if I was going to go for one player, I'd maybe consider Eze as a nice differential. There just seem to be too many midfield options at the moment who look great. I'm not going to consider taking out Rashford at the moment or any of my Brighton midfielders. So it's going to be tough to squeeze in a Crystal Palace attacking asset. Fulham are a team who are going to be without their star, Mad Mitrovic, out with an eight-game suspension. So it's going to be Vinicius playing up front at the moment who could offer the only real potential from the forward line. Andres Pereira in midfield as well if you need a budget option is still gathering all those returns down at 4.3 million or whether he's priced at the moment. He'll be on penalties as well with Mitrovic out. So could offer a nice option, but as said, with midfield at the moment, that's where a lot of our funds are being invested. And so no one's really eyeing up too much of a budget midfielder right now. Perhaps if you do need some desperate funds to try and get Holland back in, you could consider Andreas as an option. And those fixtures rank them third out of all the teams in the Premier League over the next four. But then got Liverpool, who as mentioned, I don't think I really want to go for anyone at the moment, but if you've brought in Mo Salah, of course, hold on to him. And then Aston Villa, so Oli Watkins dragging them all the way up into the top five. Nottingham Forest up next with a tricky fixture against Newcastle in gaming 31. Following that, they've then got Brentford and Fulham in the next two. If for the defensive fixture difficulty, we've got Crystal Palace at the top. So again, no one really am too considering their way he could offer the best option out of the back line. But they've got Aston Villa in there as well. So players like Alex Moreno could offer a nice pick if you're looking to go for one of them. Of course, all the teams in the top five here in both the attacking and defensive fixture difficulties are teams that won't have a blank fixture in game week 32. So this is going to be especially relevant if you don't have a free hit chip left remaining. A popular strategy at the moment is going to be to use the free hit chip in that game week in order to take out players like Brighton Assets and Man United Assets who don't have a game that week. So if you don't have a free hit, be looking at some of these players. If you do still have your free hit and you're planning it for that game week, you can consider just the game week surrounding game week 32 without any bother, really. That game week's almost irrelevant for you as you're going to be using the unlimited transfers, getting in your temporary team for one week. We've then got Fulham for defensive fixtures. I'm not thinking there's too many defensive picks. I would like to go from there. Wolves, same as applies, really. And Everton, even with Joaquin scoring that absolute screamer, I probably won't be touching their defence when we have players like Trippier. Chilwell's still looking a good option going forward. Manchester United assets. I know we've got Brighton assets as well. They will be blanking in game week 32. So again, if you don't have the free hit, you might have to consider, unfortunately, 
biting the bullet and taking out a few of those players who might look good options right now in favour of getting a full 11 lined up for game week 32. But yeah, that's going to wrap up your quick guide for game week 30. I hope you found it useful. Drop a thumbs up if you did enjoy. And I'll see you all very soon for Eddie versus the algorithm that will be coming your way tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.